Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, up on section 11 of Similitudes 9, coming out of the Shepherd of Hermes. In this section, we're going to start to give the details of the 12 mountains that represent the whole world. We're going to talk about the unforgivable sin. We're going to talk about who it is that can be saved during the tribulation. Alright guys, stay tuned. Go ahead and hit that like button and hit that bell button so you can get the rest of these classes as they come out. Shalom. All right, well, let's go on. Okay. 178. Here said he, the variety of these mountains, that is, of the 12 nations. All right, so here it is. He's about to start explaining these 12 nations. Mm -hmm. 179. They who have believed of the first mountain, which is black, are those which have revolted from the faith. And spoken wicked things against the Lord and betrayed the servants of God. All right, so now we're starting to get into the details of who these 12 different mountains are. Now, just like the rods in the eighth parable, the first individuals are uh, individuals who have uh, basically blasphemed the Father. You know, what does this one say? Does it say they're blasphemed? Yeah, when it says that they've spoken wickedly. Yeah, this is def definitely telling us that they were believers. Because it said they revolted from the faith. Right. Yep, they, they, you, you're absolutely right. 180. These are condemned to death. There is no repentance for them. And therefore, they are black because their kind is wicked. Okay, now this is, you remember there, the unforgivable sin? We were talking about this the other day. Yeah, um. Blasphemous against the Holy Spirit. Well, you see right there in 179 where it says, Spoken wicked things against the Lord. Mm -hmm. And remember, Lord is a generic word, right. you, you know, which, you know, basically mean Elohim. You know, we don't really know who it's talking about there, you know. But they, they are talking wickedness against the Lord and have betrayed the servants. They have essentially committed the unforgivable sin. And that's why it says right there in 180 that they are condemned to death. And it says there is no repentance for them, meaning they, they won't have the opportunity to repent. Mm -hmm. Anybody who has done this will never get the opportunity to repent. You have to understand that you are actually you are actually given the opportunity to repent. You were actually given a chance to. Not everybody is given that chance. Now, some people are given a chance and they won't accept it. But there's certain individuals like these ones on this black mountain. That are not going to have the chance at all. Repentance will never enter in their heart. The thought of repenting will never enter in their heart. Hmm. And so they're going to die to death. They're going to die. Yeah. That's what it says. 181. Of the second mountain which was smooth are the hypocrites who have believed and the teachers of naughtiness. And these are next to the foregoing which have not in them the fruit of righteousness. Right, so they are very similar to the ones on the uh, black mountain, this on this smooth mountain, but their only difference is, is that they haven't blasphemed. Right. Right, and so to them, they will get the opportunity for forgiveness. You know, but look what it says, they're hypocrites. What is a hypocrite? A hypocrite is someone who uh, does something they tell you not to do it, but they're actually doing it themselves. And so right there you see that there are teachers. It says teachers of naughtiness. And so when you think of a hypocrite, this this is a person who's telling you you should love the Lord. They're telling you you should be faithful. They're telling you you should do what the Bible says. But yet they aren't doing it. That's the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug. You know, on one point he's telling you all of this stuff, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. And then you say, hey, Rev, are you keeping the commandments? He's like, no, we ain't supposed to be doing that. Right. So he's a hypocrite. Yeah, one of the things that came to mind was, you know, they tell, one of the, say, for instance, they tell you that you're not supposed to, that it's okay for you to uh, 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 celebrate Easter, but they're not celebrating it. You know what I'm saying? They they said, no, nah, I don't celebrate Easter. I celebrate Passover or something like that. But so they would be like a hypocrite. that would be like a hypocrite. You know, they might they ain't going to get it as much trouble as the other guy who's, you know, telling you you should only have one God. You should only have one God. But yet, you know, you go to his house and he still got, 
his, you know, Easter eggs all over the yard. He's got his jack-o'-lanterns out there. His Christmas tree is, well, his Christmas tree is still out there. His lights are still in his house. But yet he's screaming, you know, we only serve one God. Mm -hmm. That's a hypocrite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 182. For as their mountain is barren and without fruit, so also such kind of men have indeed the name of Christians, but are empty of faith, nor is there any fruit of the truth in them. Right. Wow. Yeah. So it's saying that they carry the name of a Christian. Yeah. But they don't have any fruit. They're not. They, they just think, Barren. you know, if you go in and you listen to these guys, you know, you, you know, and you listen, actually take the time to listen to their sermon. What are they telling the people? Other than send me your tithes money. Oh, he told them that, all right. What else are they giving them? What what else what else benefit are they teaching them? What are, what are, what kind of practical knowledge are the people leaving? You know that uh, that show. What are they going home with that they can now use and apply in their life to where they can improve their life? Nothing. They're getting nothing. You know, they're not learning about how they can live out the scripture. They're not learning how they can make these laws applicable in their life. They're definitely not hearing anything about the 12 virgins. They're not hearing anything, hearing anything about the tower. They're not even hearing anything about the tribulation. You know, basically the only message about the tribulation that they're hearing is, hey, we're going to be dead and gone before it even gets started. So we don't have to worry about that kind of thing. Yeah, it's so kind of sad that, you know, with me learning, I'll tell you, this Hermes class has helped me a lot because I'm seeing some of the things that I'm doing and that have carried on in my life from the church. And I thought that they were gone, but, you know, with me studying these 12 virgins, I'm seeing that some of the stuff is still there. But you think about it that... You know, they're actually not telling you anything that you can actually l use to to help you with this tower. Right. Nothing. And they, that ain't the purpose of them. Their purpose is for you to send them money. That's the only thing they want to remind you of is to send them money. They basically bring you down there, put on a show for you, and then get your and then you pay them for the concert that they've just put on. There, there, there is. And the thing is. If, if they were to actually start to teach truth, they would lose their congregation. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's why his that's why, you know, his mountain is barren. That's why there's no fruit there. There's no fruit to be had there. Mm. That's that. 183. Nevertheless, there is room left to them for repentance. If they shall suddenly pursue it, but if they shall delay, they also shall be partakers of death with the foregoing kind. Yeah, so, you know, once they understand the truth, then they have to run over and, and start to get in the truth. But if they delay and say, you know what, you know, uh, I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm going to stick with this. And, you know, I don't want to know about Hermes. I don't want to know about the Third Testament. I don't I don't believe in Moses. I'm not going to go read the covenant because I don't want that. You know, I don't I don't want that in my mind. I want to stick with uh, the blessed hope or whatever. Then, you know, they 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 aren't going to make it. But if they speedily change, then they will have a chance to be in a tower. Remember, they're not bad guys. They're just a little bit confused, really. And so they do have a chance to get back in the tower. But they have to change. They have to put away that stuff. You know, there's plenty of pastors on YouTube now who, you know, used to have big congregations and big churches. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, all they got is, you know, a few YouTube subscribers. It's because they put away that pagan doctrine and put on the truth. And now, you know. It's like they're being punished for it. Oh, it, Not the father punishing them. I'm just saying the people. Oh yeah, the people will punish them. Mm -hmm. The people. The, that's that's why the Reverend Pastor Deacon Doctor Doug is like that. Is because he knows his congregation is going to punish him if he starts to tell them the truth. You know, they they they're, they're going to push the dislike button. They're going to push the unsubscribe button. They're going to walk out of the church. They're going to go find somebody else. That's going to tell them the lie that they so desperately want to hear. And that's that the rich man can get through the eye of that needle. Mm -hmm. That you can be wealthy and have all of your worldly possessions. Yet you're going to be sitting happily in the kingdom of God. They're going to go find somebody else that's going to do it. 
So the second that guy, if T.D. Jakey, was to all of a sudden start teaching that message, people are going to switch the channel and go find somebody else that's going to teach him that message. And he knows that. He knows he's going to lose that congregation. That's why, that's why I didn't go to seminary school. I tell this story often. After I have read the Bible, I have read every word, every verse, every chapter, every book in the whole Bible, and then it came time, I, I had the choice to go to seminary school or engineering school, I chose engineering school because I knew there was coming a day when I would have to stand in front of a group of people and tell them the truth, and they were going to walk out. And I didn't want my family's well-being or my family's welfare dependent on that. I didn't, in other words, I didn't want, I didn't want to one day have to lie to the congregation just to keep my children fed. I knew that I was going to be the one to stand up to the truth and my congregation was, a walk, was going to walk out. And so I didn't want my whole career or my you know, livelihood dependent on the ministry. I didn't want that. Number 184. I said, sir, why is there room left to those for repentance and not to the foregoing kind, seeing their sins are well nigh the same? All right, so he's saying these people are just like them over there. They appear to be just like the ones on the Black Mountain. Why do they have the chance for repentance? You know, why does why does these guys on this smooth mountain have the chance for repentance, and those guys over there? They seem to be so similar. There is therefore said he, to these a return unto life by repentance, because they have not blasphemed against their Lord, nor betrayed the servants of God. But by their desire of gain have deceived men, leading them according to the lust of sinners, wherefore they shall suffer for this thing. Yeah, that makes so much sense when you put it together with these um, televangelists or even, you know, just uh, people of the church are wanting worldly gain and they're willing to, to deceive the people for their own desires. Right. And he's saying... Be you know, they have repentance for this because they haven't blasphemed the Father, but because of what they're doing, they're still going to suffer. Right. Suffering. They just have to repent quickly. They have to, you know, not dilly-dally and hang over, hang around in that. You know, they basically just going to have to, you know, pull that Band-Aid off real quick, you know, because, you know, um, and get it over with. So let me say, let me ask you this. So where, okay, if the tower is made up of these stones which we now recognize as 144, 144. Mm -hmm. where are the other people? Well, okay, now now you're getting into additional details of the tower. Okay. You have to go all, all right. the way back to uh, Visions, Vision 3. Mm -hmm. You have to go um, even further in this book here. There is a court around the tower. Revelations talked about that too. It talked about the court. The courtyard, mm -hmm. well, that, that courtyard is going to make up the multitude of individuals mm -hmm. um, that will also be in the kingdom of in the kingdom of heaven. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, that makes sense because when you think of the courtyard and the tabernacle back in the Moses, that's where all the common people hung out. Yeah, so that's where that's going to be the multitude of people. Those will be people who haven't taken the time to adhere to the commandments and the rules, but there will be people who have gotten... Um, gotten into the tower or gotten to, into the ark through charitable deeds and mm. such, right? And so they're going to make up the multitude, the millions and millions of mm. people that John saw in the courtyard. Mm. Okay. All right. I think that revelations. I think that that was praise the Lord for that that key point because that helps out a lot. Praise the Lord. Okay. One eighty six. How be it? There is still left them room for repentance. Because they have not spoken anything wickedly against the Lord. So this is talking about T.D. Jakey. This is talking about Kenneth Copeboy and all the other uh, ministers who are out there teaching, you know, uh, uh, um, basically church doctrine. You know, because they aren't blasphemous, they still have a chance to get into this tower. You know, because, you know, basically that's the one thing that separates them um, is the fact that they haven't committed blasphemy. Going all the way back to remember the uh, the parable of the um, uh, the two shepherds there? 
you know, these individuals will be, a, they will be put over into the hands of the angel of punishment, and they will spend time with him for a few years. Okay, another thing is that I'm noticing is that it's talking about it. when it says blaspheme, blaspheme against the Lord, but then it says and betray the servants of God. Yeah. Um, who are the servants of God that he's talking about? <laughs> These are the people who are trying to teach the word, trying to teach truth, but yet they yet they are being targeted and persecuted by the church members. I think you said something about you, you saw a video or article or something the other day where what did you say? Anybody who tries to live out the Bible will be called a cult. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that calling them a cult, that persecuting them is actually targeting and harming the children of the servants of God. Mm -hmm. They're actually just trying to shut them down. They're trying to kick them out of their church so that they can have, uh, so that they can have their way with their congregation. They don't want nothing to do with, you know, coaching the fight. We don't want you in our church at all. We want you to get out of here. You know, we want, we want to be able to tell. Our church members, what well, we want to be able to tell them, and we want nothing to do with the truth coming in here, and so they persecute them. Mm -hmm. Even in their absence, they tell them, you know, people stuff they're Muslim, or they are cult, or they serve in a devil, and all of this stuff, basically to slander their name so that, you know, their uh, congregation don't run over and hear their message at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so they're targeting them, harming them. 187. They who are of the third mountain, which have thrones and brambles, are those who believed, but was some of them rich, others taken up with many affairs. The brambles are their riches, the thrones, those affairs in which they were engulfed. All right. So this is talking about a wide range of individuals. These are people who at one point believed or they still do believe the Father exists. They believe in God, but they've never taken the time to realize what it is they believe in. They've never picked up the Bible and started to, you know, what does the Bible say? Read to show yourself approved. They've never read and figured out what it is that they're believing in. They're kind of just going on and saying, we believe, I believe. You run up to them now and you talk to them, you say, you believe in God? Yeah, I believe in God, you know? But, you know, I believe in Christmas, too, and I believe in Halloween, and I believe in, you know, uh, eating things, sacrificing unto idols, and I believe in breaking the Sabbath day, and I believe that I can do whatever I want to, you know, and I'm going to be supernaturally sucked off the planet, and I ain't got to worry about such things. Well, it also says that they're not willing to uh, lay down their, their riches. Yeah, they're and not. These are the white and round stones. They, 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 they. They love the worldly stuff too much to listen to the Father and listen to His Word. You know, these are the individuals who, who you know, basically they don't want to lose their stuff. Mm -hmm. They don't want to lose their worldly possessions or their status. You know, what does it say there? The, um, uh, the rich, um, uh, the brambles are their riches. They don't want to get rid of their riches. And the thorns are the affairs in which they are engaged. They're many business affairs. They don't want to get away from that stuff. They don't want to hear it. You know? That's why they're in thorns and thistles. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm just thinking about how when we um, were in, in living that lifestyle of riches and engaged in our affairs how you know our lives were definitely not centered around scripture no at all no. And, and you know I'm not saying that everybody has to live the lifestyle that we, we li we're living we're off grid and such I'm not saying that at all because you don't have to but I am saying that there you can't love this stuff you can't serve God and mammon. Right. And so at some point we had started to serve in mammon and the scripture, like you said, wasn't really a significant part of our life. Right. 188. Now they who are entangled in much business 
and in diversity of affairs join not themselves to the servants of God, but wander, being called away by those affairs with which they are choked. Yeah, this is a lot of individuals, you know, they, they, I mean, a lot of my friends, a lot of my family members are fit in this group. They believe in the Father, but because they mm -hmm. want to hold on to their worldly positions, they, they don't want to hear nothing I got to say. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean. This, I think, I think that's most, most of our family. <laughs> most you of know our what friends I'm saying? Is most of the world. Yeah, they don't want to, they do believe, mm -hmm. they do, you know, they do, quote unquote, love the Father. Pray. They pray. They, you know, they're good people. Seem like. Yeah, you know, we love these people, but when you start talking about, you know, keeping the commandments, keeping the commandments, and talking about getting rid of their stuff, they like, uh, uh, More it ain't happening. It. it ain't happening because I don't believe it takes all that. They don't believe uh, the Father wants us poor and without. He don't want us without. Yeah. And and. And so they believe yeah. that the father wants them with the luxury cars and the luxury houses and all of this stuff. That is thorns and thistles. That's who we're talking about here. These people, you know, they they are addicted to the affairs of this world and they want nothing to do with the father because it seems like it seems like the father does want you poor. Like we said in the go ahead. I was just thinking, we're not saying this. This ain't something that Clifford Coach and Stacy is making up. We ain't saying that this is what he said. This is what scripture is saying. So, you know, we're not making this up. This is this is something and, that's written down. This and it's not it. like we took on this mission and said, you know, we're going to take a uh, vow of poverty. And this is the lifestyle that we're going to we're going to live. You know, it just happened to be that when we started right. following the scripture and doing what the Bible says, he started stripping us of unnecessary stuff, stuff with, that was getting in our way were stripped away from us. Some of it, you know, with us kicking and screaming and hollering, hey, we want that stuff. Mm -hmm. It was stripped away from us. But now we find ourselves productive. Right. We're actually able to help people. Yeah. And I think I remember you saying the other day how if we would have had these things already, we wouldn't do the research to see how to make it our own. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We would, if we would have been able to go out and purchase a, uh, a uh, big old water tower or water tank, we wouldn't learn how to make our own. No, well, if you say it like this, if you could, if you had the monthly income to go down to Alabama Water Company and, and get them to run pipes over here right. and run water to the house, yeah. you wouldn't be concerned about getting water out of the ground or, you know, or getting water in any such a way. Same thing with electricity. If you if you could get Alabama Power to come in here and you could afford the three hundred dollar light bill, you you would have never thought about solar panels or you know turning off lights or doing without stuff. Okay, well, and we don't want to linger too much on this, but what about the people that says I do have the income to get Alabama Power to to run these light to That's run this water for me? So what what's wrong with that? You are, like they, what they said right here, you are entangled in uh, many business affairs and, and your stuff. You are in, you are, you... Yeah. Well, let me say this. Because, and, and, and what I'm saying is because every month is about paying my bills. Paying my bills. I got to do this so I can get my bills paid. You know, I got to go to the job so I can get my bills paid. Basically, just working to pay bills. And now you don't have, the, the end result is you don't have time for the Father. And, you know, and, and, and plus, think about this, where it started from with us. What about the mark of the beast? Right. Yeah. Sure, you have, you know, all of the income that you, you know, want and need right now. You can buy and, you know, anything you want. You can afford that $300 light bill. But there's coming a day. That the only way you're going to be able to pay that $300 light bill or, you know, that $1,200 grocery bill or whatever else bill you have is that you must take on the mark of the beast. That, so what are you going to do then? Sure, you can afford it now, but what are you going to do then? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you know and, and, you know, that's, that's the problem. We are actually being set up right now. Mm -hmm. Making us dependent on 
uh, making us dependent on money, making where we should be dependent on the Father, we've been dependent on these thorns and on these thistles. With the end result is, you know, we're going to be forced to get in that line and get that, you know, whether it's a chip in your hand or whatever it is, we're going to be forced to get that in order to feed our family. Yeah, and not be able to get into the tower because you can't get into this tower. It's even said in Revelation where no defiled thing will be able to enter into it. You can't get in this tower with that mark of the beast. No, it won't, mm -hmm. won't be able to do that. 189. And so they which are rich with difficulty yield themselves to the conversation of the servants of God, fearing lest anything should be asked of them. These, therefore, shall hardly enter into the kingdom of God. They shall hardly yeah. enter. Now, first of all, they're not adhering to the law. They're not adhering to the commandments or the rules and such. But now, now they don't want nothing to do with charity either. Mm -hmm. There's only two ways to survive the tribulation. One is to be solidly in the law and doing what the Bible says, following the commandments. The other one is to take on charity and actually help other people. But you see here, they don't even they don't want nothing to do with the service of God because they're afraid they're gonna ask them for something. <laughs> <laughs> they don't yeah, it's like, you know, you call them on the phone and they're looking at the caller ID like I ain't answering that phone, they're gonna ask me for something. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can got to the point where I don't ask nobody for nothing. You know what? The father is, is, is pushing me that way. You know, I I, I tend to ask uh, my mom for her things that, you know, I just don't even need. It's just convenient. She got it. Let me just go there and sugar just ask, yeah, and sugar stuff. and then just like that. Just don't, you know. So now when they see you, they like, what you need? Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, and some people run from you. They yeah. hide from you. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. lie to you. I ain't got nothing. No, got nothing. But, and, you know, what does it say? It's going to be difficult for them to enter into the kingdom of heaven, into the kingdom of God. It's going to be, you know, really hard for them to get there. Yeah. Yeah. 190. For as men walk with difficulty barefoot over thorns, even so, these kind of men shall scarcely enter into the kingdom of God. It's like that rich man, that camel trying to get through the eye of the needle, you know. They, they, they basically going to have to be stripped of that stuff. Yeah. You know, remember how difficult it was for you to be stripped of your possessions. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you held on to them as long as you possibly could. And, you know, and, and that's what these individuals have to go through. The whole world is about to be humbled. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're all about to lose our possessions. 191. Nevertheless, there is afforded to all these a return unto repentance if that they shall quickly return to it that because in their former days they have neglected to work in the time that is to come they may do some good okay talking about repentance here you know that's what the that's what the key to this to this book is about if you if you were to summarize the whole book of you know uh, uh, the shepherd of Hermes into one word it boils down to repentance you know and so he's saying that they basically have the chance to repent mm -hmm. you know they, they they have a chance to get away from this stuff but again they have they have to do it quickly yeah it keeps it keeps repeatedly saying quickly quickly you know go ahead and do it now because go ahead. yeah the time is coming where it's gonna be cut cut off well, the thing, and plus it takes time. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, it's not yeah. something you can do, you know, at the last minute. Like the guy on the deathbed, you know, that, you know, if he realizes he's, you know, going to die there. He says, oh, well, I guess it's time for me to get repentant. Right. No, you know, it takes <laughs> some time to, to learn to live this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if it were possible that you could, you know, repent at the last minute and get into the tower, what would those stones look like in the tower? I mm -hmm. mean, you know. They, you know, last week, you know, you, you were, you know, down at the casino, you know, balling out of control, you know what I'm saying? And now you're talking about you want to, you know, live a humble lifestyle, you know. You, you. Remember that when Hermes was with these virgins, he had to walk with them and he had to sing with them for a little while as, you know, and, and that takes time. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, so that's why they have to do it quickly is to give themselves time enough to learn to live the Bible. Yeah, we've been, you know, on this walk for how many years? Uh, what, 
four or five years? Yeah. Um, this, this, you know, learning about actually walking it out, uh, you know. Living the, leaving the uh, thorns and thistles yeah. and actually trying to get back into the tower. Yeah, we've been doing it since 2014. Mm -hmm. It's going to take time. Or 2013. You just you know? can't pick it up and say, okay, I'm going to do it now. It's, it, it takes work, yeah. If, but, but, but that's what a lot of people are going to do, though. They're going to wait to the very last minute. There's a lot of people, you know, and, you know, that's why, you know, we're, we're given some time to get back in the tower because there's a lot of people that's going to wait for that stuff to start coming out of the sky. You know, they're going to wait till the whole house gets shaken down. All of their possessions get destroyed in this global earthquake quake that we're expecting. And then all of a sudden, they're going to turn to the Bible and start trying to, you know, live it out. But just like just like everybody else, you're going to have to learn where you're going to get your food from now. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to get your water from now? How are you going to live in this humble state? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's going to be the bad part. Because, you know, like, like I said in one of the classes earlier, I would rather be doing it by myself. When, you know, I can still go to my mama and ask her for sugar. Whereas waiting to the last minute. When ain't nobody in the community going to have sugar. And not only where are you going to get your food from, where are you going to get your water from, but where are you going to get your faith from, where are you going to get your patience from, you know, how are you going to have patience? Because it takes time to, to learn patience. It ain't just something that you automatically have. You're going to have to learn how to be cheerful. You're going to have to learn how to be patient. You're going to have to learn how to not be anger, angry. You're going to have to learn how to take on these versions. And, and those are the ones that... It's going to be more importantly than, you know, the food and the water, I believe. You know. Where are you going to get the scripture from? Right. You know, I mean, we have been acquiring these books and, you know, studying and stuff. Where are you going to get the knowledge from? You know, you, the world has been humbled. You don't know if YouTube is going to be on or not. You know, you, you, you don't know if you're going to be able to jump on eBay and find you, you know, the Shepherd of Hermes or the Third Testament. You don't know any of that stuff. That's why you have to do it quickly. Mm-hmm. 192. If therefore having repented, they shall do the works of righteousness, they shall live, but if they shall continue in their evil courses, they shall be delivered to those women that will take away their life. And this is what you're starting to see as people get more mean and more hateful and more deceitful and malicious is these wicked women seeing that these people aren't repenting, they aren't taking the time to change their life and trying to get on track. These beautiful women are coming and they're grabbing them and they're putting them in a much worse state than they ever started off. One of the women that I'm seeing a lot of is pleasure. Yeah, okay. Pleasure is, a, you know, that seems like that's all that people people are, are living for now. It's just pleasure. Yeah, it's doing what feels good. Yeah, doing what feels good to them. Okay. 193. As for the fourth mountain which had many herbs, the upper part of which is green, but the roots dry, and some which being touched with the heat of the sun were withered. All right, talking about this fourth mountain. All right, now, this is kind of like the rods where you have part of the rod was green and part of the rod is dry. You know, and what does it say? And, uh... And some of which be in touch with the heat of the sun and withered. This reminds you of the rods that, you know, these were the doubtful individuals. Whereas they had the Lord on their lips. But when anything came, mm -hmm. you know, in front of them, their doubt kicked in and it started to run over to the other side. Mm -hmm. 194. It denotes the doubtful who have believed and some others who carry the Lord in their tongues but have him not in their heart. Therefore, the grass is dry and without root, because they live only in words, but their works are dead. Yeah, you said you said a few minutes ago they seem like good people, you know. Well, the second anything comes up on them, they're gonna they're gonna run over and become bad people. It's like it's like. They have the Lord on their lips, or so when things are going good, everything, you know, they, 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 they love the Lord. But as soon as any trials or anything comes up on them, they're going to run into the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And these people will get mean on you. They will get hateful. They will get slanderous. They will get malicious on you. Mm -hmm. You know, it is because they are doubtful individuals. Mm 
They don't have the faith. One of the and the patience. One of the things you have to you, we understand is that not everything is going to go our way. Not everything is going to be pleasant or pleasurable, like you say. There's going to be times when we're going to hurt. It's going to be times when we want to cry. It's times when we're going to cry out to the Father. Why? Why? Why is this going on? Well, if you don't have the faith, if you have doubt in your heart, that doubt is going to drag you in places that you don't want to go. One of the things that I'm thinking about is there are going to be times when he don't give you what you want. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They, they're, they're good while everything is going their way. But the second that you want something and you don't get it, then you become doubtful of the father. Oh, you know. He, he he can't do it, or or, or or I'll go do it myself, or you know, and like you said, they they'll become mean and hateful, hateful towards you. One ninety five. These therefore are neither dead nor living, and with all are doubtful, for the doubtful are neither green nor dry, that is neither dead nor alive. Yep. So you know. It kind of wishy-washy you know these are individuals the angels don't really trust them because you know you never know which way they're going to go you know and these these individuals they're subject to be kicked out of the tower 196 as for the herbs dry away at the sight of the sun so the doubtful as soon as they hear of persecution and fear inconveniences return to their idols and again serve them and are ashamed to bear the name of their Lord. Yeah, as soon wow. as something, huh? I said, wow. As soon as something happens, you know, they run back. You know, mm -hmm. persecutions, inconveniences, they run back to their idols. And remember, idols don't always include in it that little figurine. I, I was thinking about money. And false prophets. Okay, yeah. They run back to the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Dub that tells them, you know, <laughs> you're supposed to be prosperous. The Father wants you to have, you know, luxury stuff. You know, he wants you to be the head and not the tail, which includes, you know, you know, uh, uh, having everything to go your way. You're not supposed to be under these persecutions and inconveniences. Well, I'm sitting here thinking about well, individual that um, that we had been, you know, I think I would say helping out. And, um, you know, he got back with the church. And as soon as they start telling him, you know, you don't have to to live like this. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Then he quickly went back to um, the other lifestyle. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, when he when he first fell off, you know, uh, so to speak, you know, we were the only people that was helping him, and it was at that point that you know you would have thought that he was going to be a solid member of the tower. Well, when he first got not fell off, I would say got struck by the yeah, rod. Yeah, when he got struck by the rod, you know, mm -hmm. we were the only people. We helped him move in. You know, help them with food, help them uh, uh, get get around. He was the only transportation he had. Get and, herbs and, and you know, different stuff like that. And it seemed like he was going to be a member of the tower. But then the persecution started. Mm -hmm. Then his then the members around him started, you know, coming and you know started, you know, telling. And so he ran back over to where he started from. And you know, we haven't seen him in a long time. or talked to him in a long time. But from what we understand in here in Hermes, he's gonna be in worse shape than yeah. when when we first when we you know first met him or whatever. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be sad. One ninety seven. This kind of man then is neither dead nor alive. Nevertheless, these also may live if they shall presently repent, but if not, they shall be delivered to those women who shall take away their life. Yep. So, you know, they have the opportunity to repent. They have the opportunity to try to get back right. But, you know, if they don't, you got these these 12 beautiful women that's ready to, you know, take them over. People like perfidiousness, so they may turn into atheists. Or incontinence, you know, uh, which is, what, what was that? The lack of self-restraint, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know... So they may become drug addicts, or they may, you know, you know, take on other stuff. Sadness. Sadness. Mm -hmm. They may become maliciousness, you know, Pride. or mm -hmm. you know, or may even get prideful and such. But you know, this, this what we're reading here is very, very real, and you know, uh, understanding the position that you know that they're in. We don't want to be judgmental or anybody. 
But, you know, understanding what this word says, this is what, you know, people have to expect if they don't get repentant and try to try to get right with the Father. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 198. As concerning the fifth mountain that is craggy and yet has green grass, they are of this kind who have believed and are faithful indeed, but believe with difficulty and are bold and self-conceited that would be thought to know all things, but really know nothing. All right, so we're starting to get a little bit better. These individuals, you know, um, they, they being craggy, they have a little bit of knowledge, but they're not quick to adhere to additional knowledge. See, we have to understand what, what the Father means by the veil being placed over the eyes. Moses wasn't allowed to understand everything. He understand very little at all. You know, when it came to the stuff that he was actually writing down and talking about, he didn't have a full understanding of what was, what was going on. Not as much as Paul and not as much as John and those guys did. They understood a lot more than Moses did because some of the veil was removed off of, off of their eyes. But even in today's time, we have the ability to understand more than John did and more than Paul did. It's a progression as the father takes away more and more of the veil. So you have these people who are, or at one point may have been, you know, studious people and into the word and learning stuff. Well, they now find themselves don't want to listen to anybody else, even though, you know, um, the veil has been removed and, you know, people come and may not have more additional information being craggy. They don't want to hear it. They, they, they're like, I got enough. I know everything I need to know. I know what the Bible says. I don't need to hear anything about, you know, anything else. And so they basically become hard learners. What does it say? Bold and self-conceited. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? uh, want, want to believe that they know all things. But, you know, man really understands nothing at all. You know, we don't really understand that much as far as the, the Bible is concerned unless the Father gives us, you know, this information. You know, and if we are craggy, then, you know, we're, 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 we're really fall under, under pride or we really fall under arrogance. Mm -hmm. And arrogance is going to keep us away from, you know, learning. Yeah. 199. Wherefore, by reason of this confidence, knowledge is departed from them and a rash presumption is entered into them. They're arrogant. These individuals are, these are the arrogant people of the world and you know we have a we have a lot of new information remember remember that Daniel and other people said that knowledge was going to increase right so you know he didn't necessarily say that every individual's knowledge was going to increase you know you're going to have bits and pieces from different places you're going to have to get a little bit from Hermes Academy and then you're going to have to get a little bit from you know somebody else and you're going to have to get a little bit from somebody else and if you set on yourself, if, you know, we over here at Hermes Academy say, you know, we understand everything, we don't need nobody else, then we're going to miss out on some of the vital information that we're going to need to survive this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and then what's going to happen next? Here come them wicked women in order to drag us back over to, you know, you know some of those places that we don't want to be. Stuff like uh, foolishness and pride. Those are, you know, pride has started to take over. Mm -hmm. That's arrogance. And that's one of the wicked women. Right. 200. But they carry themselves high and as prudent men, and though they are fools, but would seem to be teachers. Yeah, they basically teach them, but they, but they, but they are, they are craggy, they're rough, you know, and, you know, I, I probably found myself in this, in this uh, position at one time through, you know, through my arrogance or whatever, but, you know, once you start to realize, you know, how what the father says about being arrogant and being humble then you kind of realize that, you know everybody has something to add you know mm -hmm. you can learn a lot from a dummy you know mm -hmm. and that's basically what it's going to take here in this time period because he's not going to he's not going to bring his information we learn in the third testament that the arrogant those people in these haughty positions are not going to get the information they need you know the people, you know, these TV evangelists and these exalted positions, they're going to be the last ones to get this information. Mm -hmm. 201. Now, by reason of this folly, many of them 
whilst they magnify themselves or become vain and empty. For boldness and vain confidence is a very evil spirit. Yep, and so this is going to make them basically retarded or held back in their understanding of what's going on. They're not going to gain the knowledge they need. And we learn this all through, you know, the, the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. He basically tells us that those people in these exalted positions when it comes to the end times, they're going to be the last ones into the tower. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and it, it, it don't take when you start to think about, you know, how it's going on, you know, they're, they're, in, they're, they're in elevated positions. You know, you can't get the word into them, you know. I, I can go down there with my Bible and start trying to talk to T.D. Jakey, and I'm not going to get through his entourage. You know, I'm, they're, they're not going to let me anywhere close to this guy to hear this information. You know? Not at all. Not at all. 202. Wherefore, many of these are cast away, but others acknowledging their error, have repented and submitted themselves to those who are knowing. Yep. So, you know, they're basically going to have to, what is what does Revelation say? They're basically going to have to come and sit at your feet. Mm -hmm. You know, they once once we, once we, the world is humbled, some of these individuals are going to realize, no, Stacy has knowledge, uh, and we need to go down and sit by her, you know, and hear what she has to say, while others, you know, that, that, uh... Stout-hearted and just... Said no, I can't do it and won't do it. That's that. Those evil spirits are going to drag them back to pride land, back to the land of arrogance, where they'll sit there with their buddies, waiting to be destroyed with these with these uh, floodwaters or whatever. Two o three, and to all the rest of this kind, there is repentance allowed, for as much as they were not so much wicked as foolish. As void of understanding. Yeah, so they're not blasphemous. They're not deceitful. They, you know, aren't the ones that's persecuting the son, the, the servants of God and such. It's just that, you know, they were lacking a little bit of information and a little bit a little bit arrogant or whatever and wouldn't let some of the truth come in. So they do have the chance for repentance. Right. 204. If these therefore shall repent, they shall live unto God. But if not, they shall dwell with those women who shall exercise their wickedness upon them. Yeah, and you know, that goes for everybody. It's these wicked women that's going to do the cleansing of this tower. They're going to carry away all of the stones that, you know, have been rejected and refused to, you know, be corrected. These, these 12, you know, beautiful women are going to be the ones that's going to come and going to drag these people off back to where they came from. Yeah, they remind me of, uh, like, the, um, the... The angel of torment, the shepherd of torment. They are sent here from the Father, and they have a job to do. You know, they we think of the. I think Hermas, the shepherd of repentance, said that the angel of tor the shepherd of torment, is a righteous, righteous angel, but he has a job to do. And these here remind me, um, they have a job to do, and their job is to bring you right back to. To the to, land of where you want to be. Get you away from yeah, the tower. Get you away from the tower. Because you know, we, we, if, if not, then these people will end up polluting those that are still in the tower. If mm -hmm. anybody is, you know, allowed to remain close to the tower and they still have this wickedness in their heart, then you know, it's 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 going to be it's going to be a little bit contagious, and you're going to end up affecting those that are in the tower. And the father's not going to have that. You know, all wickedness is about to go away. With that, I'm going to say, Godspeed. Shalom.